So I have this brand new Xtool D1 Pro to test out and show off what it is capable of. After experiencing a few very surprising results, I did something to this machine that I never should have which ended my testing way sooner than I expected. I feel like I really dropped the ball this time around, but I did make the cinematic teaser, which I hope you enjoy. So what happened and what did I do? Let's start back to where it all began. First, like always, I start out by unboxing it and getting everything assembled and ready to go. The reading materials are really great and have a ton of beautiful and well done projects. But there was one thing of concern and I would like to hear your thoughts on this in the comments, which is, they have included PVC as a material to cut and engrave. As far as I know, when lasered, PVC creates hydrochloric gases, which I believe is dangerous to both the machine and anyone around it. So leave a comment for Xtool on whether or not this brochure should be revised before shipping out. The brochure also has a huge selection of items and materials that you can purchase from their website, which they now have included over a hundred different colors of acrylic, which I was hoping to get to show you some examples of how that would cut. The assembly instructions are well done and were pretty easy to follow. And this assembly was very similar to putting the earlier model, the D1 together with a few minor changes. I did film the whole assembly, and if I hear from enough of you, I will put together an instructional video if there is enough interest. One of the things that I was very excited about was the fact that they include this small screwdriver that you can use for assembling the machine. This makes the process so much quicker than using a normal Allen key. I was also very happy to see that they put different colored Loctite on all the bolts that you need for assembly. This will help keep all those bolts nice and tight over the lifetime of this machine. Here we have it. This is the 20 watt laser head. This is a new feature that you will find on the Pro model. This little scale on the side here has some measurements for helping you get the depth of the laser cutting through the middle of the material, which will give you much better cutting results. I also like that they put these toggle tabs on here, which make for much quicker adjustments of the height of the laser head. Here's a look at the nozzle, which is ready for an air assist. And also we can see what appears to be a flame sensor. So this is a nice safety feature that they added, which if it detects a flame, it will shut down the laser and set off an alarm. They also provide a small tube of lubricant. So that should be fun. This one also has the riser feet that you can put underneath the laser to help lift it up high enough to use the rotary or to engrave on thicker materials. One of the things that makes Xtools machines stand out from all the other companies is the fact that they use steel rollers and bearings, which is something that will last a very long time and keeps things running really, really smoothly. And I'm not going to go in depth on the assembly of this machine in this video, but again, if you are interested in seeing or hearing how this all goes together, be sure to leave a comment below requesting that I make that video. And after about 20 minutes, I've got everything assembled and we can plug it in and turn it on. This machine actually runs quieter than the earlier model because the fans on the laser head do not turn on until you start lasering. And since I'm most eager to see how this laser cuts, of course, I'm going to go ahead and get their air assist unit set up and plugged in. You can hear the air coming out right here. Then I'm going to slide the hose through this loop and then press it into the pressure fitting. And the air coming out of this nozzle will keep your lens clean and also give you cleaner and deeper cuts. 
For optimal cutting, we also want to use the honeycomb bed underneath the laser. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this aluminum underneath here, and I have put the feet on the laser to help raise it up to give me the height that I need to slide the honeycomb underneath. The honeycomb also has these little silicone feet that you can put on all the corners here, which will help keep it in place and keep you from cutting yourself on these sharp corners. Now that we have everything set, let's see what this 20 watt laser head can do with this three quarter inch oak plywood. This is some tough stuff filled with a lot of glue. I normally cut this with my big 90 watt CO2 laser at about three millimeters a second. But even with that, I sometimes have to finish off the cut with my jigsaw. As you can see, the first attempt wasn't quite enough to get all the way through, but check that out. It's almost there, so let's give it another shot. Still not quite there. It looks like we have about one eighth of an inch left to get all the way through this material, but this is incredible. That's only one pass. I know all my diode naysayers right now are looking at this in astonishment, as most people think the diodes have no business trying to cut anything. And wouldn't you believe it, I forgot to set the height of the laser head correct to this material, so I'm going to go ahead and lower it down a little bit more and see if that makes a difference for cutting. And this is one millimeter a second. We are cutting out a three quarter inch circle. I want you to see what it looks like in real time, but now I'm gonna speed it up so we can get this down. But this whole circle took about 20 seconds. It's actually starting to get through. And this is pretty crazy, but with just one single pass, the laser started to penetrate all the way through all of these layers. Let's see what it can do if we allow it to do three passes. Moment of truth. Wow. And there we can see it made it through almost all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and force it out with some brute force and we can get a good look at the quality of the edge. I was curious to see how the amount of air assist might affect the cutting, so I decided I would take off the standard X-Tool air compressor and replace it with my shop compressor, which can get up to 120 PSI, but we're going to start out running it at just 20 PSI. And like my wife normally tells me, I stopped a little premature. The cut, that is. And you can see here that the second pass was making a really nice clean cut. We're gonna give it another attempt. And again, this is 20 PSI at one millimeters per second. This was about two passes, but for some reason I stopped it a little premature yet again. But let's take a look at the underside and see how it's looking. As you can see, it didn't quite make it. Although if I had let it finish, it may have. All right, now I'm putting a piece of solid pine underneath the laser, and this is three quarters of an inch thick. And you can see on just one single pass, it appears as though the laser is passing all the way through. Though I did allow it to do two passes here, and hopefully this time I let it go all the way before stopping it. And here we can see with just two passes, that cut all the way through all of that solid pine. And here we can see with that 20 PSI of air going through the nozzle, how clean it keeps the edge of the material being cut. I'm even gonna rub my finger over the edge of this and you can see that no residue is coming off of it. My compressor can continuously keep a PSI of 40 PSI, so I decided we would go ahead and max it out and see if that has an effect on the cutting capabilities of this laser. And with just three passes, the wood falls right out of the cut marks. And here's the char test. As I rub my finger over it, you can see a little bit of residue is coming off of it, but not nearly as much as you would expect. The actual thickness is 0.738 inches. 
I am very much liking the results that I'm getting from this upgraded air assist and I'm going to have links to the air compressor and all these air fittings and everything you would need to add this to your machine if you are interested in it. Another big upgrade that Xtool has included on the Pro model is limit switches. So you're going to see me driving the laser head into the side of the machine here, but you're going to hear an alarm and it automatically stops it from hitting the edge. And you can see a close up on those sensors right here. They use some kind of non-contact sensor, which is really cool because you know a sensor like this will never wear out. And the limit switches are on all sides, so you don't have to worry about crashing it at any point. I had plans to show you a ton of practical, real-world products and examples of what else a machine with this amount of power and speed can do. But instead, I found a tiny glitch in the Lightburn software preview screen. So I thought maybe I'd try to fix something that wasn't broken in the first place. I ended up messing around with the firmware and attempted to downgrade to an earlier version. Well, that literally failed and this made the machine unoperational. Sorry, everyone. After calming down, I decided I would get this fixed as soon as possible, and I will be back to show more of what this beast can actually do. And from what I have heard, this device is now coming after the fiber lasers next. A huge thank you to those of you supporting me on Patreon. We have a new supporter. Everyone welcome a new top supporter, Dr. Larry Anderson. And of course, the faithful or forgetful Kyle Hickson and Woodland Iron. Thanks for watching, and I hope you catch me on the next one.